Where my dudes? I hope you're doing well. Okay, so this is the video for our force and weight class animation. Now, before we dive into animating, there's something that I'd like to show you guys, something I wish I'd shown you a little bit sooner. Um, I've been getting emails from some students about their lip sync animation when they're playing back the audio that it was slowing down and I didn't click what the problem was until now and I'm really sorry about that. So you guys might have noticed at this point that having worked in After Effects so long, when you try to play back your animations or when you try to play back the audio files, perhaps if you're on a, um, a lower end machine or not as strong a machine, um, it starts to slow down and then the voice sounds like it's coming from a demon from hell. Um, and the reason for that is because your disk cache is full. So if I can explain that in the best way that I understand it, um, every time we press spacebar to play back information in After Effects, what happens is After Effects makes a mini render file and it puts it away in a folder that is created when you install the software. And when that folder gets full, After Effects' RAM essentially is, is now so clogged up that it can't play back information at full speed. Um, this will often happen in much larger projects, so that's why it didn't click, because typically that doesn't happen at this stage in the animation. Um, but once you get to much larger projects, it does happen quite often. So, in order to empty your disk cache, we need to go to your Preferences. On a Mac, that is under After Effects, Preferences. And on a Windows machine, you will find that under Edit, and Preferences will be down in the bottom section somewhere here, I believe. All right. We're simply going to go to the media and disk cache option. That is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth option from the top. Clicking on that will open up our preferences window. Now here you'll see the uh, maximum disk cache size. I was trying to replicate the slowing down effect, but it wasn't working too well. So I'm just going to save that back up to 100 gigs. But here you'll click on empty disk cache. You'll see that mine is two gigs full at the moment. After a day of teaching you guys, this usually gets up to about 40 gigs maybe. And then um, if I can reminisce back to third year, I remember quite often dumping up to 100 gigs of disk cache a day while working. So this is a very useful trick to know. Um, before you click OK, do not do this while you're working mid um, sort of animation, all right? Make sure that you save before you do this. It's gotten a lot better since um, I was using it back in the day, but I do have a horrible memory while studying where I emptied the disk cache without saving and it completely ruined a file the night before submission. So please do make sure that you save a file before you do this. Then you simply need to say OK. It clears out that folder from those uh, with those temporary files and your machine will run a lot faster, all right? So there's another trick for you guys for today. Okay, diving into our force and weight animation today. So inside of our file, we've got our character put together inside of Illustrator. And on our first layer, we have got our class exercise reference, a fantastic piece of animation done by the guys over at, sorry, let me find the right tab here, um, Killer Visual Strategies on Dribble. I highly recommend checking them out. So we are going to be recreating their motion here. So we're going to have our character raising the bar up into the air, then coming down into a squat and lifting that bar up and then coming back to rest. Nice little simple piece of animation. We're going to follow the process of simply starting with our basic keyframes. And then after we've done that, moving into some easing, staggering them out and then secondary action, essentially just baking a cake one layer at a time. All right, first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to color label our layers and we are going to move their anchor points into the correct positions while we do that. So I'm going to set layer two, the weights, to green for today. We can leave the anchor point where it is. And I'm just going to lock layer one so I don't accidentally click on it later by chance. Layer three and four, I'm just going to label as yellow for today. And I'm going to solo them. Remember that soloing is where we click on this uh, empty button here to the right of the visual button, and that then makes them only visible. And we're gonna move their anchor points essentially to where the meat of the shoulder would sit. All right, as you saw in class, we're not actually going to be animating any of the anchor points properties, but it's always a good idea to prep your character before you start animating because trust me, if you come back later down the line and you need to try and re-rig it after animating, it is tear-inducing. 
All right, layers five down to 10, that refers to all of our face layers as well as the head. We don't need to worry about the anchor points for any of those, except layer 10. We're going to move the head's anchor point to the chin, essentially where the uh, head would tilt if we need our character to do so. All right, then we have layer 11, our torso. I'll set that as, um, let's just make it orange for today. And I'm gonna move the anchor point to where the belly button would be. So currently just sitting on top of that weight bar over there. Layer 12, the pelvis. I'm just going to make fuchsia for today. We don't need to worry about the anchor point there. And then layers 13 and 14, solo those, my two legs. We are going to move those anchor points into the hips. All right. As we pointed out in class, these limbs are not broken into two separate pieces. We will be using the puppet pin tool for these layers. So I'm just going to set them both as cyan. And then layer 15 is our background. I'm going to lock that and make it shy so that I can hide it later. We're going to hide a couple of other layers, uh, <laughs> hide a couple of other layers in a moment. So I won't turn on the shy effect just yet. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to apply our puppet pin effect. In order to do that, the first thing that I'm going to grab are my layers three, four, and then holding down control or command, which will allow me to then select 13 and 14. If you hold down shift, it would collect everything in between, just for those who don't know that little trick. I'm gonna solo these layers and we are going to apply our puppet pin. Okay, so the puppet pin tool can be found at the furthest right side of our tools in the top left of After Effects. It looks like a little thumbtack button. And when you click on it to turn that button blue, a couple of options pop up immediately to the right of that. You'll notice that there's an option for mesh. We wanna tick that to make sure that it's turned on. And then currently the expansion, mine is set to 10. I'm not entirely sure what the base expansion is set to, but for this exercise, you can type in 10 for your expansion. Density, we're gonna be changing that value in a moment, but density currently reads 10 as well if you're a perfectionist and want the same number. Okay, with the puppet pin tool selected, what this does is I can click to create points on my limb. I'm creating them one point in the hand, one where the elbow would be and one where the shoulder would be. And what that does is it then creates this deformation mesh over the asset. You'll see that it's created these little uh, yellow outlined circles. These are our puppet pins, and these allow us to deform our shape quite nicely. All right. So once we have placed our pins, one in the hand, the elbow, and the shoulder, the next thing that we need to do is come down to the timeline for our layer. You'll notice that since we've now placed these points, this little effects option has been toggled down, pointing out that the puppet has been applied, and we then have the puppet engine. So this is just the deformation engine, how After Effects reads this mesh currently over the arm. Currently it's set to advanced. We want to click on the word advanced and change it to legacy. Now, once we click on legacy, nothing changes visually. What you need to do is just reselect one of those little circular points, and you'll notice that the information at the top where it previously said expansion and uh, density, I believe, it now says expansion and triangles. All right, so expansion refers to how far away the edge of the mesh is from the asset. It depends on um, the layer that you're working with, but I always find that the sweet spot is about 10. To give you an idea, if I were to type in minus uh, five, for example, make the mesh on the inside of the arm, when I tried to deform it, it would leave information behind. So any information inside that mesh will be deformed. Anything left outside will be clipping behind. All right. So that's why I schmark an expansion of 10. Triangles. The number of triangles here refers to the number of triangles that this mesh is made up of. Um, 500 for me, again, is a bit of a sweet spot. If you were to type in a crazy number, like triple nine or something like that, that would really just bog down your computer because it's trying to work out the maths for all those numbers of triangles as they deform their layer. On something as simple as this, I'm not entirely sure it would be that big of a problem, but um, on much larger projects, such as the walk cycle animation, it would definitely try and set your computer on fire. 
Um, alternatively, if we have too low a number of triangles, so if I was to type in maybe just um, 50, when I deform, I get really ugly deformations. So we need to try and find a sweet spot between our computer's ability to handle the performance and uh, the smoothness in our triangles. You'll see as soon as I type in here 500, uh, it smooths out a little bit nicer. Not 100%, definitely not. We can't push these too far, but we can expand them within their limits. Okay, so now that I've explained how that function works, what we can do is we're going to follow this process for the rest of the limbs. So I'll select layer three and just collapse that layer. Grab layer four, puppet pin tool is selected. I'm gonna place one where the hand would be, one where the elbow would be, and just one where the anchor point is, which I know is where the meat of the, the shoulder would sit. Coming back down to the layer in our timeline, changing advanced to legacy. Moving on to the legs. Puppet pin in the foot, one where the knee would be, and one in the hip. Change advanced to legacy. Very important step. Oftentimes, that's where a mistake gets made. Please do always remember to change from advanced to legacy. Okay. These pins have now been created. The last thing that we're going to pin, I'm just going to unsolo these layers and I'll solo layer two, is the weights because we want to create the illusion of the bar essentially bending as it strains under the weight of our character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a point in the center of the weights on the left, one point where the anchor point is in the dead center, and then one point in the other weights. Change the engine from advanced to legacy and this allows us to then adjust that and give it a little bit of a cartoony strain to it. All right, cool. Now our puppet pinning has been completed. We can quickly parent our layers up and then we can start animating. Layer two, we're not going to parent to anything, but we are going to quickly pose our character like um, our reference footage over here. So I'm just going to quickly move that down just to about below the groin here, kind of simulating in our reference footage. That's where it's going to begin and end its animation. Layer three and four, we are going to parent to layer 11, which is the torso. Layer five, six, seven, eight, and nine, all of the facial um, assets are going to be parented to the head. Layer 10, the head is going to be parented to layer 11, the torso. And layer 11, the torso is going to be parented to layer 12, the pelvis. All right, so if I read those back again, layer one is not parented to anything. Layer two is not parented to anything. Layer three and four are both parented to 11. Five, six, seven, eight, and nine are all parented to 10. 10 is parented to 11, and 11 is parented to 12. We're not going to animate the legs. Um, sorry, I don't mean to say we're not going to animate the legs. We're not going to parent the legs. It's going to make animating them a little bit easier. All right. One last thing before I forget, we didn't do this in class, but for those of you who want to add a little bit of extra facial expression, we can also puppet pin the mouth. So I'm just going to grab layer nine, grab the puppet pin, one in the left corner, one in the center, one in the right. And that'll just give us an opportunity to move the mouth. You'll see that unfortunately I didn't place the nose on its own layer, but if you are going to animate the mouth straining, you are always welcome to simply just move the layer down slightly, right? You can rearrange the face a little bit if you'd like to do that. Okay, cool. Everything has now been parented. I'm going to quickly select layer five down to 10. We're not going to be animating these layers anytime soon. So what I'm going to do with these is just make them shy by clicking on that little mushroom button. And then I will turn on the shy feature so that those layers are no longer visible in our timeline. All right, cool. Before we begin animating, uh, the last thing that we're going to do is just quickly pose our arms. So I'm going to select layers three and four. And rather than hitting R for rotation, we are going to hit U for uniform. What that does is it reveals the current keyframes created on these layers. 
So as you might have noticed, when we create our keys or rather create our puppet points, they create keyframes for us. And they'll create these keyframes in line with wherever your indicator is at that point in the timeline. So right now you should have three keyframes on layer three and three keyframes on layer four. Excuse me, I'm gonna take a sip of water here quickly. All right, so the easiest way to interact with the pins, because we can't select them unless we have the puppet pin um, tool selected, and I often find that I create accidental extra points. So the best way to go about doing it is simply to click on one of the keyframes, and you'll see then that the little indicators for the puppet pins then pop up. All right, and all we're gonna do is just move the arm so that it looks as though it is currently holding the weight up in the air. Something that was pointed out in one of the lessons today as well, you'll notice that when we've deformed the arm, the shoulder kind of clips over the shirt. If you want to fix that, you can simply move the top puppet pin and reposition it like so. And do that for the left arm as well. Okay, something like that. Obviously trying to get the arms as similar as possible. Okay, so our character is currently in his correct T pose as it were. Now we can actually start animating. We're gonna begin with layer two, the weights, because we are going to be animating them moving upwards, and then we're going to animate the arms to mimic that movement. So with layer two selected, I'm gonna hit P for position and create my very first keyframe at the start of the timeline. Moving out, just counting the frames seen in our reference video, I'm going to move to frame nine. This is where our um, weight comes to the top of its lift. And all I'm gonna do is hold down shift and hit my up arrow key, which moves it. And I'm just gonna bring it to just above the shoulders over here. Okay. First piece done, now we just need to repose the arms. So in line with our second keyframe on layer two, I'm just gonna grab one of the puppet pin keyframes over here and begin manipulating them. Something that I want to point out, I did mention in class hopefully, but also to bring it up here. For some reason, when you create puppet pins on a layer and then parent that layer to another layer, it then moves the path of that pin all the way out here for some reason. It can sometimes boot it all the way up into like the furthest top corner, which can make things a bit frustrating. But thankfully it's behaving itself fairly well here. Just to point this out to you, because at this point, if I quickly select layer two, we're used to our paths being created essentially from the anchor point. So if we ever need to use the puppet pin and we need to animate the path of it, if someone can find the answer, I'll be eternally grateful, but I've not been able to find a solution for quite a while now, just to point that out. All right. With that out the way, all I'm going to do is just pose the arm as best I can and make it look as though he's holding it. Okay. And of course, the nice thing is it doesn't need to be set in stone. We can always come back and refine it a little bit later. But that's looking okay. This elbow may be a little bit up. But apart from that, I think it's looking fine. Okay, so we now have our first movement. Taking a look at our reference, we see that our character does a little jump movement while lifting that bar. And that essentially acts as the anticipation for when he then drops down into that squat. So we're gonna to go to frame five, which is where that little movement begins. And we are going to animate layers 11, 12, 13, and 14's position. And we're just gonna have our character shift upwards ever so slightly. So with layers 11 down to 14 selected, I'm gonna hit P for position, create their keyframes. I'm going to move two frames to the right, one, two. And I'm gonna hold down shift and just hit the arrow key up once. Okay, so that is on frame seven where we have now shifted those keys down. Uh, sorry, up. We're gonna shift them down now. 
then moving on from frame seven, we are going to go on to frame 15, frame 16 rather. And this is where our character comes into his uh, squat. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is with my legs, I want to bring them back down to where they initially were. So I'm just going to copy the very first position keyframe for layers 13 and 14. The torso and pelvis, however, we are going to bring down quite a lot further. So the pelvis, I'm going to grab that first, and I'm going to shift that down to the point where it's almost hiding the pant legs. Just like that. And then the torso, I'm going to shift down even lower, um, something like so, just kind of covering the pelvis there. Right now, this movement doesn't really look like much. It kind of looks like he's uh, collapsing in on himself. But once we stagger those keyframes, it's going to have a nice effect to it. Okay. Now, while our character is bending down, obviously we want our legs to be animating as well. So I am now going to select layers 13 and 14. And I'm going to hit U on my keyboard, which will reveal my puppet pin keyframes. What we're going to do is drag the keyframes that were made when we placed our puppet pins and align them on frame seven. Now we can see our frames here at the bottom of the viewing panel over here. Okay, so we have placed our puppet pins in line on frame seven. And then as we come out to frame 16, what I'm going to do is for both of the legs, I'm going to move their hip pins down so that we can see the bottom of the pant legs again. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to grab those knee pins and I'm going to push them out. See how far I can get them to create that comical look. And then we're going to shift the feet out. We can have them directly under the foot, but there's a nice little sort of aesthetic appeal to it to have that little arc going through. Something like that. Adjust that so it looks a little bit better there. And really just pose the character. And then as we scrub through that animation, we'll see that it looks as though our character is bending his legs as he squats. Next chunk of animation that we're going to do is we're going to animate layer two again. We need the weight to start sinking down with our character as he moves down into that squat. So our second position keyframe was on frame nine. We are going to go out to frame 16 and we're just going to shift that weight down. Now, something that I just want to quickly point out, I'm going to solo this layer to try and make it a bit more visible. I did mention this last term, but I'm assuming a lot of people have forgotten about it. But when we have our keyframes, if we have the direction go in the complete opposite direction over the course of a frame, After Effects automatically creates our paths. And if I pull this path, you'll see that it was actually extending beyond the stopping point. All right, so it's trying to help us by having by like automatically adding a bit of follow through. But in this situation, it's not really doing us any favors. So what I want us to do right now is we're just going to grab the pen tool, click and hold and select the convert vertex tool. And we're just going to click on these keyframes to remove the path from their animation. And that just guarantees that as that bar is moving, it's not overshooting its position. All right, unsoloing that. Cool. So we now have the first half of the animation where our character is now sinking down into that squat. Next thing that we're going to do is we are going to move out to the one, sorry, 23, uh, the 23rd frame. That is going to be just before or rather when our character starts standing up. Now, in order to make sure that our character doesn't have any sort of um, floatiness to him, there's no accidental keyframes making something move or wiggle while we wait for this, what we're going to do is we are going to create a bunch of empty keyframes on frame 23. In order to do that, we're going to move over to the far left in the timeline and diagonally below the eye icon that can turn the visibility of your layer on and off, there is a little empty keyframe button that you can click to turn on and what that does is it creates a keyframe with that layer's current property at that point in the timeline. That guarantees that we've got a holding position there. 
Then moving out to frame, uh, what's that? Frame one second, seven frames. Our character is standing straight up and lifting his bar into the air. We can animate the bottom half of the animation quite easily. All we need to do is come down to layers uh, 13 and 14. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste the very first set of puppet pin keyframes. Don't copy and paste the position frames, only the first puppet pin frames. And what that will do is bring the legs back into the correct position. We're going to do the same for layer 11 and 12. I'm going to copy and paste the very first position keyframe for layer 11 and 12. And that is going to bring our character's lower portion and his torso back up to their standing height. And then lastly, we're going to move on to the arms. Now, I didn't give a lot of space, uh, that's my bad, for our character to really stretch his arms up. So what I'm going to have us do actually is I'm going to show us how to um, essentially use a null object to help scale down an asset after we're done animating. So we are going to overshoot this barbell. It's going to cut out of the frame for a little bit. So on frame, one second, seventh frame, I'm going to move this quite high into the air. I think maybe just before the actual bar of the weight dis like hits the edge of the uh, view panel. And then what I'm going to do is grab one of the keyframes for the puppet pin on layer three and pose the arm. Like so. Okay, so it's okay that the bar cuts out. I'm gonna show you how to fix that because we can use the uh, null objects to solve this problem quite often in many cases of animation. Okay, so if we scrub back through this animation, we now have our character raising that bar into the air. Nice. Then, last little section, we have a hold. Our character holds it in the air. So I'm gonna move out to frame 15. So that's one second and 15 frames. And again, we're going to create empty keyframes by just simply clicking on the little empty keyframe button to the far left on the timeline, creating a keyframe for every property. Then I'm going to move down the timeline to the very last second, that's second number two. And nice and simple, all I'm going to do is copy and paste the very first keyframe from layer two's position. And then I'm going to copy and paste the very first set of puppet pin positions from layers three and layer four. And that has our character bring his arm down to rest. Okay, cool. So we play this back, we've got our basic movement. It's looking pretty decent so far. Next up, we're going to do our easing and then we are going to add our secondary action after that where we animate the facial features. All right. So I'm just going to quickly expand my timeline so I can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to click and drag to select all of the keyframes on screen at the moment. Then we can apply easing by hitting F9 on the keyboard or simply right clicking on any one of the keyframes and selecting keyframe assistant, easy ease. Okay, let me drag this back down again. Now, because the first portion, or rather because the animation was able to be broken down into sort of significant portions, such as the first movement, the second movement, and then the third movement, um, this makes it very easy to work with in the graph editor. So I'm going to grab the keyframes for layers two, three, and four, and I'm going to go into the graph editor. Because they're all moving at the same time, we can work with them here at the same time. Okay. So the illusion that we want to create here is a bit of a struggle and then popping into place before he comes down into the squat. So what I'm going to do is grab my set of keyframes here on the left and I'm going to drag that handle towards the right. And then I'll grab the second set of keyframes and push it slightly to the left. I do want to give the character a little bit of time to slow down into that lift. Okay. 
So that's looking pretty good, happy with that. Next, we'll do the next set of loops. We're gonna come back to this little loop over here when we do um, the leg animation. So this little piece over here, we want again another struggle. And I'm gonna make it a fairly steep struggle and see what that looks like. It's maybe a little bit too much. Not too intense, but we do want a nice struggle to begin with so that he eases out of it and lifts it up. Just gives the sense that it's actually a piece, like a, a weight force being interacted with. And then lastly, this lowering position. I think what we can do is simply grab the last set of keyframes and create a little bit of a dip so that that barbell comes down quite quickly and then eases into its position. Okay. Cool. Moving down, we can then do the rest of the layers at the same time. So I'll grab keyframes from layers 11, 12, 13, and 14, and dive into the graph editor. Again, because they're all moving at the same time, we can move them all at the same time. Now, this little blip that we have over here, where our character is bouncing into the air, we're not going to do anything with that. It only takes place over two frames, so there's literally no time to work with there. It really wouldn't make a difference. For this movement over here, we want to create the illusion of easing down into it. So we're going to come down fairly quickly. I'm going to grab the third set of keyframes here and create a bit of a peak. And I'll push this out slightly so that eases out of it as well. Okay. Standing up, we want to create the illusion of a struggle. So we're going to have a very big peak to the far right. And that creates the illusion of overcoming the weight as he snaps into place. All right. And here we have a happy little accident that we can actually leave in. So if I play this back, you'll notice that the bar is being left behind slightly as our character is now squatting. This is because we haven't yet adjusted the graph, or rather we adjusted the speed graph for that position in the wrong direction. If we had pushed it in this direction, it uh, would fall faster. But it's landing quite nicely. So I'm pretty okay with that. Just wanna see here. Yeah, sorry, I had the wrong layer selected. So this little piece over here, this little bump. If we were to change this bump, we could correct that timing, but that little fall does look like it's adding to the uh, secondary action. So I think we can leave it. Okay, so we have now applied easing. What we're gonna do next is we are going to grab the torso layers keyframes simply by clicking and dragging. And I am going to shift them to the right by two frames. Let me see what that looks like. And this creates overlap between the movement of the upper torso and the thighs and legs. So that overlaps looking great. Okay, then we can come and add our secondary action, which is going to be animating the facial features. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit command or control A to select all of my layers. I'm going to collapse them. And I am going to lock all of them except for layer two. Right, layer two, we are also going to be animating the puppet pins to add that curve to it for the weight. All right, I'm going to turn off the shy function in order to reveal layers five down to 10. And um, we might even need a little bit of animation on the head. So let's just quickly bring out the torso. I'm going to hit U to bring up its position keyframes. Let's quickly add some animation to the head so that we've got some overlap there as well. P for position, I'm on frame seven. I'm going to create a position keyframe for the head. And I'm just going to go ahead and add easing to it because we're going to do that at the end anyway. Okay, as our character is jumping up, we don't really need to add much of an animation there, um, but we can maybe just shift the head up slightly to create the illusion of that head rising. Then as our character sinks, so on our 18th frame in line with the third position keyframe on layer 11, I'm going to bring the head down. I'm going to copy and paste that keyframe over the fourth frame for uh, layer 11. 
And then I'll just copy and paste the first frame to bring our head back to normal. And then what I'll do is just grab those frames and shift them to the right by one as well so that the head is lagging one frame behind the torso. There we go. Cool. Then we can animate the facial expressions. So I'm going to select uh, layer five down to nine and I'm going to turn off the shy buttons for those. Uh, layer 10, we've now just animated, so we can lock that. I'll relock layer 11, and I'm going to make all of those layers shy. The only layers that I want on screen is layer 2, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So that is our eyebrows, our eyes, and in fact, sorry, we do want layer 9 because we added um, puppet pins to the mouth so that we could make our character frown. What lovely people we are. Okay. So what we're going to do is I like to start off with the eyes because they're the easiest for me to figure out the timing for. Typically, human beings blink when they begin an action. So we are going to have our character blink as he lifts the bar up for the first time. Um, and what we're going to do is I'm also just going to turn off layer one now. Please remember to do that before doing your final render. Okay. So I'm going to hit S for scale on layer seven and eight. And I'm going to create my very first keyframe. And I'm going to remember to unlink my two values. So the very first two frames will read 100, 100. Two frames to the right, I'm going to make them read 130. And that is going to close the eyes down into little slits, creating the illusion of the blink. And then two frames later, I'll simply duplicate the first keyframe so that we create a little blink cycle. Okay, so we've got our first little blink, that's looking good. The next movement that we'll have with the eyes is when our character is coming down into his squat. I think I'm gonna have him close his eyes as he struggles against the weight. So I reckon from frame 10, I'm going to create some empty keyframes. So on frame 10, my scale frames both read 100, 100. Over the course of five frames, I'm going to have him close his eyes. So on frame 15, the value will then read 130. In fact, we might even push it perhaps to 20, so that they're even thinner than when he blinks, creating the illusion that it's a struggle. It's the little things in life. Okay, his eyes are then going to stay closed until he starts lifting them again. So I'm going to go to one second on the timeline and create some empty keyframes. So at the one second mark, it reads 120. And over the course of five frames, so at one second, five frames, I'm going to make it read 100, 100. Opening his eyes. And then we want a little blink at the end as he brings the bar down. So what we're going to do is go to frame 15 and we're simply going to copy and paste the very first scale keyframes from layers seven and eight so that he blinks at the end. Notice how the blinks really add so much life to him already, or at least I like to think so. Okay. Let's move on to the eyebrows next. We're going to be animating the rotation for those. I'll just leave the uh, eye scale keyframes out as guides. So layers five and six selected, I'm gonna hit R for rotation. And we're gonna leave them as they are at the very beginning of the animation, but I want my character to really start looking as though he's scrunching up his forehead as he leans down into this movement. So I'm going to align myself on frame 10. And for layer five, I'm going to type in a value of minus 20 degrees. And that rotates his eyebrow forward. And create, sorry, <laughs> I haven't created my first keyframe yet. Um, on frame 10, we want our keyframes to read zero degrees. I'm getting ahead of myself, it's been a long day. Sorry, frame 10, rotation keyframe for layer five and six both read zero degrees. Moving then out to the 15th frame, I'm going to type in a brow value for layer five at minus 20 degrees, which makes him look as though he is scrunching up his forehead. And layer six is going to read positive 20. So his eyebrows scrunch up as he leans down. 
We might even animate a little bit of the position for that. So let's just grab layers five and six. I've got both of them selected. I'm gonna hold down shift and hit P for position and create my very first position keyframes for layers five and six. As our brows scrunch up, so moving to frame 15, I'm just gonna move them down slightly. Doesn't need to be a big movement, but the fact that the movement's happening really will add to it. Okay. Moving out to the one second mark, I'm going to create empty keyframes for the position and rotation on layers five and six. <laughs> Looks super angry here. I quite like it actually. So what I want to do is I think maybe by the one second 10th frame, we're going to bring our eyebrows back to normal. So one second 10 frames, I'm going to copy and paste the first set of keyframes for position and rotation for layers five and six. And there we have it. Lastly, we can animate the mouth and then we'll do the weight. So I'm gonna grab layer nine and hit U for uniform. And we're going to have our character just frown his mouth a little bit as he goes down as well. Okay, so I'm going to put myself on frame 10, grab the keyframes and align them on frame 10 for those puppet pin positions. Moving out to frame 15, I'm just gonna grab the middle pin and I'm gonna shift it up slightly to create a frowny face, nice and simple. Moving out to the one second mark, I'm gonna copy and paste that second puppet pin so that it holds that frown. I might add a couple of frames in between actually going up and down if I wanted his lips to quiver. So if we wanted to really push this, we might do it that like every second frame it moves down slightly. I haven't done this sort of seriously, so I don't know if it works, but it might make his lips look like they're trembling. Maybe slightly, but every little piece helps as long as it works. Could definitely do with refinement, but that is an option if you were trying to make a character look as though his... Uh, lips were trembling but I'm just going to have him hold that frame so his mouth just stays um, frowned while he's holding that pose and then moving to the one second uh, five frame mark I'm just going to copy and paste the very first in fact I'll just paste all three very first keyframes from the um, from those puppet pin positions and now we have animated pretty much everything the very last thing that we're going to be doing is layer two I'll hit U to bring up the puppet pins. Uh, let me just collapse everything else so that we don't get confused. Um, do that there. So essentially what we want is as our character lifts his arms upwards, we are going to add a bend to it. So moving out to the 23rd frame, I'm gonna grab the keyframes for those puppet pins and place them there. Okay. Moving out to the one second sixth keyframe mark, all I'm gonna do is grab the middle pin and I'm going to bend the bar up slightly. Again, we're going to correct this in a moment, but this creates the illusion of that bar bending under the weight. Moving to one second 15 frames, I'm going to copy and paste that second keyframe so that it holds that bended look and then at the end of the animation, I'll copy and paste the first keyframe so that it comes back to a resting flat position. I'll just grab those and apply easing because we might as well. Okay, so if I were to bring this up, we now have a nice piece of animation. Okay, the only thing that we obviously now need to fix is just to rescale our character. So what we're going to do is I am going to unshy all of my layers. I want to be able to see all of them. And I am going to go to layer, new, and I'm going to create a null object. All right, so that's layer, new, null object. That creates our red null object here in the center of the screen. And I'm just going to leave that exactly where it is. Um, perhaps I'll change the color to something that you can maybe see a little bit better on the back of that uh, red 
I don't know. I'm tired. I'll leave it as red. Okay, so this null object, what we're going to do is anything that's currently not parented, we are going to parent to the null object so that when we scale this layer, everything else will scale with it. Okay, so please make sure not to break the parents that you've already made. We can select layer three, because currently now the null object is now layer one, and the class reference exercise is now layer two. So layer three is the weight, so that's not parented to anything. Layer 13, which is the pelvis, and layer 14, and layer 15. We don't want to scale the background. So please select layer 3, 13, 14, and 15, and we are going to parent that to the null object that we've just made. We can then hit S for scale on that null object, and we can scale our character down and reposition him wherever we want in this animation. So very useful tool to remember that you can correct little mistakes like that by making use of the null object. And now our character fits in the scene. All right. And that is that, my dudes. I hope that you uh, found this easy enough to follow. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao.